Well, today the defense begins its case in the trial of Raj Rajaratnam. We have back with us Jim DeVita. He's the former defense lawyer uh, to convicted Tyco CEO Dennis Kozlowski and now a lawyer at Day Pitney with the insider's point of view. Jim, I know you've been following this trial uh, uh -huh. pretty much off and on over the past month. Um, is the defense case going to rest on expert witnesses? I think the expert witness will be critical to the defense case. Uh, the defendant's uh, attorneys did not announce whether he was going to testify, uh, but it... Raj uh, himself. Raj right. himself. But the uh, hearing on, on Friday was, I think, a significant success for the defense, mm. that they were, the government was trying to exclude the expert testimony and the judge is going to allow it to take place. Right. And there's several candidates, I think, that are going to be expert witnesses. I think we've got the former COO of Galleon and also Greg Jarrell, who's the former top economist at the SEC that we yep. talked about. Uh, who's going to be most important and what do they need to draw out of them? Well, I think the former COO of uh, Galleon is more likely to be a fact witness okay. about how they operated and all of the hard work they did to try and uncover research facts and not rely on shortcuts. I think that the expert witness is critical because Part of the uh, proof that the government has to uh, make beyond a reasonable doubt is not only that the information that was passed was confidential, but it was also material and it was not public. Mm -hmm. And I, from my review of the testimony on Friday, uh, the professor is going to testify about much of the information being in the public. Being uh, out there, basically. Being out there. Okay. Concept called leakage, that information prior to significant events will leak out. Uh, and therefore is already taken into account by the market in pricing the particular stock. And the other aspect is that um, some of the information uh, is not material, and he cannot use that word because that's an ultimate issue of uh, law and right. fact for the jury, but he's going to provide evidence that the uh, stock price of the particular stocks in issue did not move significantly in response to the announcements okay. of the information that was passed. Um, if you were there today in the courtroom, then how do you make the jury forget about these wiretap recordings? Well, one of the ways is to try and provide evidence uh, of the nature that they are trying to provide. That is, expert evidence that focuses on objective facts the objective fact of what happened to the stock after the information was announced publicly and the objective facts of what was available to the public and the investing public prior to the uh, alleged conversations okay. and draw their attention away from the damaging conversations that are revealed in these wiretaps. And, and they were quite damning. I want to just play for you some of the recordings, some of the highlights from the recordings that we heard uh, throughout this past month. Uh, let's, um, let's play for you Rajiv Goel, who's of course a former Intel executive right. called uh, Raj, his pal. Let's play that. Okay, listen, there's something important that I want to talk to you about, right? Yeah, tell me. <clears throat> so, you know, people support, um, the stock went down $2.79. Okay. 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 We know, because uh, one of our guys is on the board, we know that they're going to put $41 million in escrow. It's a $250 million deal, right? Right, right. And I know they're going to close before October 31st. So I can't buy anymore because I own 25% of the company. And they were poison pill, right? Right. So I thought it was an opportunity for me to buy for you. Now, that's pretty damning. It's it's. Mr. Rajaratnam saying to his friend that I've received information right. that on the face of what he says was not public. That, that appears right. to be he what says, he said. I, I, I heard from somebody on the board. Correct. I mean, I think that's pretty explicit. This was non-public information. It, it seems to be. It seems to be. And uh, that's a hard one to, to address. Okay. So if you were on the defense? Try and draw attention away from it and not... Uh, it, clearly, um, it's hard without putting a defendant on the stand to provide right. any explanation of that conversation because one party has already explained his side of it. Um, for the defendant to take the stand in these circumstances uh, is a big risk. Right. So I think that uh, another strategy, and it uh, is not clear yet whether this is their strategy, but another strategy is to just divert attention away from these tapes okay. by focusing on the expert testimony and the other evidence that the other witnesses are going to provide about all of the hard work and good things that the analysts at uh, Galleon did. Right, to bury it. Uh, let me just play you another short one from Danielle Casey, one of the traders that, uh, that passed information. They're going to guy down. I just got a call from my guy. I played him like a fine-tuned piano. 
Don't you think, Jim, part of the problem also is that some of the characters in this are not very likable, including this Casey? I think that's a very difficult problem to the defense has to face. I think that um, uh, for that reason, focusing on the objective criteria that the government uh, has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, try and create doubt in the mind of the jury that they've achieved that, mm -hmm. and that's, that, I think, is the defense strategy. Um, one of the unfortunate facts is that it doesn't really address uh, as, as well as the, um, the substantive counts. It doesn't address the conspiracy count quite as much, and that is the, the conspiracy means you had an agreement to pass inside information, to pass what you hoped was material information. Uh, the fact that a particular stock did not move uh, significantly in response to the public announcement doesn't mean that you did not intend to get material to inside that. information. So that, okay. so, the, so you're saying the, that's a weakness. Then. I think that the I think that the expert evidence is much uh, more addressed to the substantive counts than to the conspiracy count because okay. conversations like that. Uh, smack of bad intent, right. and that's a problem. Uh, quickly, though, Jim, uh, would you put Raj then on? on that's the a call. Team? That's a call that only the lawyer who has worked with the defendant can make fairly. Uh, I would say that all the indications are he is not going to testify, uh, simply because the uh, the prediction is that they will be complete this week. That was. Uh, a, a prediction that was made to the judge on Friday. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that if Raj were to testify, they'd be done this week. It would be mm. virtually impossible. It would take impossible. far longer yeah. then. But I think yeah. that it would be a very risky proposition because I think so many conversations like this don't really lend themselves to good explanations. And if you... Uh, but in a way, he's the only one that can explain it, though. Yes, but the, the alternative strategy is to try and divert the attention of the jury away from the bad conversations to the objective facts and create okay. a battle of experts, right. or even better from the defense, perhaps, have an unrefuted expert testifying that yep. the information uh, was not so significant that uh, it had an impact on the market. Okay, we're going to be watching this, of course. Jim, thank you very much for joining us again. Thank for you for having by me. By Jim DeVita.